Next week's 10-day trend will take us into the start of meteorological winter, a time where interest levels in snow in particular are always peaked. This week's 10-day trend does feature the polar vortex, but there's not much to get excited about for the snowmantics at this stage. It's really a case of more of the same, with low-pressure systems continuing to bring spells of wet and windy weather in from the Atlantic. Let's run through the next five or six days of the pressure chart. You can see one low bringing wet and windy weather for the next couple of days. Another one follows on behind for the weekend. Notice how these weather fronts and the low-pressure systems, though, kind of arrive at the UK and then just kind of grind to a halt. There's a reason for that. It's because there's a big area of high pressure across Scandinavia. This blocking area of high pressure means these lows are being driven in and then they kind of bump up against that high and kind of just grind to a halt. It means that the weather systems just slow down and continue to bring us some wet and windy weather without kind of zipping through because of that blocking high, which will be in place certainly into the first part of next week, if not beyond. OK, let's rewind the clock and put out a little bit of detail on the next few days. This first low arriving at the moment, bringing some wet and windy weather across the south. It then kind of bumps up against the high pressure and, if anything, moves back on itself, lingering across northern Britain in particular during Thursday with strong winds from the North Sea and plenty of rain. We do have Met Office warnings in place covering us right the way through into Friday. There could be some flooding, certainly a lot of rain expected uh, when that rain starts across parts of eastern Scotland and northern England, especially over the hills, but even at low levels we could see quite a bit. Now that low pressure system does linger into Friday across the north, but then we have a little bump in the isobars, a brief gap, something of a respite. So certainly parts of the southwest looking drier on Friday. And that drier and clearer weather will then manifest itself in a pretty chilly night on Friday night. Saturday morning's temperatures, well, we are likely to see a frost across Northern Ireland, Wales and parts of Southern England too, something we haven't seen of late. It depends on the exact position of those weather fronts as to how much cloud we see across Northern and Eastern areas. That should keep the temperatures up here. But in rural spots, well, we could be as low as minus three or minus four on Saturday morning. And as I said, we haven't seen much of that, certainly not so far this November that has been very mild indeed. So then what happens on Saturday, that little ridge of high pressure will bring many places a fine day. That weather front hasn't fully cleared from the northeast and then the next one comes swinging in, bringing a spell of rain across the country. Most of that will be on Saturday night. And that'll be followed by blustery showers, quite a few isobars on the chart there. So the weekends can be summed up as a chilly start. Certainly a frost is likely for some. And then a largely fine day on Saturday, the patchy rain easing in the east before that next band of rain comes in from the west, bringing rain mostly overnight. And that'll be followed by blustery showers generally into Sunday. What about beyond that and into next week? Well, as we've already seen, low pressure systems will continue to swing in. But for a broader picture, let's head initially over to the United States, see what's going on here. We've had cold air drifting southwards and another injection of colder air uh, from Canada down further south across the United States is going to inject energy into the jet stream. This is what we saw last week, actually, with this warm tropical air just off the east coast, the cold air driving south, and it's the contrast between the cold and the warm that energizes the jet stream, gives it an injection. And that's what we see here through Friday and into the weekend, a powerful jet stream developing over the Atlantic and dragging those areas of low pressure towards the UK before kind of weakening off as it heads towards the near continent. And that's why we've got that pattern set up of low pressure systems coming in and then kind of fizzling out into the North Sea. But this active jet stream will remain pretty intense as we head into the early part of next week. And it's likely to be a breeding ground for areas of low pressure and sending them our way. Now, the exact details of where this low lies on Monday is still open to some doubt, and we'll firm up on details, of course, over the course of the weekend. But uh, we are likely to see low pressure systems swinging in from the Atlantic because of that energized jet. And that is the likely pattern for much of next week, as this chart shows. This is the pressure anomaly for the whole of next week from the Met Office computer model where we run them several times. It's not showing where the low pressure is going to be, but it's showing the pressure compared to average. And it does show 
a large blue circle here, pressure below average, just out to the west of the Atlantic. And that pressure pattern is backed up by the European computer model, which uh, looks very similar indeed, slightly different orientation of the graph. Again, the greens this time showing where the, low, where the pressure is lower than average, and still also showing a pressure anomaly of higher than usual pressure across Scandinavia. So this is the most likely setup through next week. Low pressure systems coming in from the west. And if this is the pressure pattern, then the wind direction coming in from the west or the southwest means that that's going to bring in moisture from the Atlantic and some reasonably mild air at times. And we'll continue to have that pattern of the lows bumping up against that area of high pressure uh, across Scandinavia. What does that mean for our weather? Well, it means a continuation of the same. With spells of wet and windy weather swinging in, there will be briefer, drier interludes in between and generally mild with that kind of wind direction, but it is getting into the latter part of November and cold air isn't too far away. So depending on the exact orientation of those lows, we could at times tap into some slightly colder air, but generally the mild November looks like continuing. Why are we stuck in this spell of wet and windy interludes? Well, we need to look even higher up in the atmosphere beyond the jet stream and at the polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex to be precise, which at the moment is particularly strong. Now the polar vortex is something that sets up every autumn above the North Pole. We're looking down here on the North Pole and these are the pressure lines way up in the stratosphere. And you can see that this week there's a strong circulation there. The polar vortex is particularly strong at the moment. When the polar vortex weakens during the winter months, that can indicate that the UK may turn colder. It can be an indication, for example, of seeing a beast from the east. But that doesn't look like happening at the moment. The polar vortex is particularly strong. And when it's strong, when the wind's going round, uh, high up in the atmosphere, the North Pole in this direction, it generally reinforces what's going on a little lower down and reinforces the jet stream, keeping our weather coming in from the Atlantic and keeping things generally wetter and windier. And the projections looking further ahead don't suggest any weakening in the polar vortex. These are the dates going along the bottom into the first part of December. And uh, the polar vortex looks like staying pretty strong. If anything, signs that it may start to strengthen further as we head through that last week in November. So no real sign of our weather patterns changing significantly. Of course, there can still be colder interludes, uh, but the general trend is for the stratospheric polar vortex to remain strong, if anything, getting stronger. And that is more likely than not to lead to further spells of wet and windy weather across the UK. As always, for the day-to-day -day details, make sure you're following the Met Office and we will keep you updated.